Hello. Welcome to my STAT 512 Project 5 presentation on concrete compressive strength. Before we dive into, into the details, let's discuss what concrete is, what is compressive strength, and our goal in, in this presentation today. Concrete is a structural material consisting of hard, chemically inert particulate substance known as aggregate, usually made of sand and gravel, that is bonded together by cement and water. Compressive strength refers to concrete's capacity to withstand loads that will decrease the size of the concrete. Our goal today will be to develop a linear model to predict com concrete compressive strength. Now, previous research on this topic has been done by Sichuan University in China by the Department of Chemical Engineering, where they built an artificial neural network. Um, we will be coming back to the previous research towards our conclusion. And uh, all right, so the data we're dealing with has a sample size of 500 observations with eight potential explanatory variables, um, starting from cement, which is the binding agent. Um, all. All the following uh, variables are measured in kgs per meter cubed. So just to brush that up, blast furnace slag refers to iron ore or iron pellets made in uh, the blast furnace. Phi ash is the coal combustion product that is composed of particulates driven out of the coal-fired boilers together with together together with the flue gases. Water, super plasticizer. It's used for high strength concrete. Coarse aggregate. Coarse aggregate, a construction component made of rock, uh, rock from ground deposits. Fine aggregate, any natural, uh, which is any natural sand particles worn from the land through the mining process. And age, which just refers to the days which the concrete has um, e existed or made. Now, our response variable is the concrete compressive strength. This is uh, measured in MPA, a unit of pressure representing 1 million pascals. Now, before we begin to look to build our linear regression model, we will check to see if our assumptions of independence in explanatory variables, constant variance, and normal distributions are satisfied. So, we pl um, a plot of all the variables against each other shows us that there isn't a multicollinearity issue in our data set. Um, so independence of all the variables from each other is satisfied. Moving forward, uh, the residual versus fitted normal, the QQ normal, and standardized value plot also indicate that there isn't a problem with constant variance and normal distribution in the residuals. As you can see, now we will start building a model. So in the model building process, I started with an initial model containing all eight potential explanatory variables in a first order linear model. We plot the added variable plots in the summary to see the only two insignificant predictors as indicated by the summary and the AB plots are coarse and fine aggregate. We can see this by uh, seeing how relatively flat fine aggregate and coarse aggregate is in the added variable plots and that the summary shows that coarse and fine aggregate are not significant predictors. The new model after seeing the added variable plots and the summary of the initial model, and then applying the best subset algorithm, what we have is uh, we can see that the subset with six variables, not including the coarse and fine aggregate, has the highest adjusted R squared. So we will be using this as uh, the next model we'll be working with. Now, our current model, which does not include the coarse and fine aggregate, satisfies uh, all our assumptions of constant variance, linearity, independent observations, and normal distributions. However, when I plotted up, upon further investigation using influence plot function, I was able to see that the number of potential influences, influential cases seemed pretty high and prominent in our data set, as we can see from the uh, influential plot in influential cases plot using Cook's distance. The remedy for uh, the remedy for a situation where we have a lot of influential cases or a problem regarding that is using the robust regression, which is what I did with the RLM function. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's see how this performed against uh, our previous linear function, linear model. Sorry. 
So our robust regression linear model outperformed our previous multiple uh, our previous multiple linear regression model, as shown by the decrease in mean absolute error and the mean absolute percent error when plotting the model's fitted points against the actual points using regression.eval function. Now, a final report. We'll be coming back to the coming. Uh, we'll uh, go back to answering our research question. So, uh, the question one was: To your best of knowledge, of Stat Five and Two independently develop a linear regression model to predict the concrete compressive strength, justify our model selection. So, our final model is a robust linear regression model because it has the same significant predictors as our linear model after dropping the insignificant predictors, but still had a better performance than when comparing the actual points to our model's fitted points. You can see I've put in the exact model uh, from the R code that I wrote for it right below the question, and it composed of uh, cement, blast furnace, fly ash, water, superplasticizer, and age as its predictors. And uh, I, I use a robust linear regression model for this question. Question, in question two, we're supposed to discuss the role of predictors. Is there a part, particular predictor standing out as the most promising one? And why or why not? So for this question, I used ANOVA type two. Uh, we're able to see cement and age have stood out as predictors by the uh, by the F value being, uh, sorry, the F ratio being just uh, comparatively way more than the other predictors. And this does make sense that cement and age are standing out as predictors. The relation with cement is rather simpler to understand as cement is a major component of concrete and is the water-based binder used to bind the sand and aggregate. As for age, I, upon further research, I learned that concrete actually hardens over time and it does not stop hardening from the day it's made. At the longer concrete uh, exists, the more, hardened, the more hard it gets. So it makes sense that these two were the predictors that stood out blast furnace did stand did have a higher f ratio value as well but not com not as much as age and cement so i only use cement and age as the answer for this one now coming to uh comparing the previous research and the conclusion although we were successful in creating a robust uh, regression linear model that outperformed just the uh the the initial linear model i made Previous research by researchers at Sichuan University in China concluded that the artificial neural network based model that they made outperformed regression models that are that have been uh, conventionally used and are still in use in engineering practices. So um, I think it's safe to assume that despite being able to make a regression model with uh, which fits the data set and is able to uh, perform uh, decently well the artificial neural network model made by the researchers does take the win in this. To conclude, thank you so much and uh, hope this presentation was enjoyable and you learned something.